Hello and welcome back to another episode of the White Sox March to October. And the main focus of today is going to be our first MLB draft of this March to October. You know, we've spent all year up until this point manually scouting a bunch of different prospects. I've come across some that I'm excited about, so I'm really excited to get into this draft. But we're not quite ready to go right away. We still have to play probably just this one more game against the Twins. But also before we do that, I kind of want to talk about just a couple minor changes that I've made and plan on making. So the first being at the very end of last episode, we made another trade and we added Tyler Wells to our bullpen. And that trade makes him now the highest rated arm in the bullpen. But I don't think I'm going to keep him there for very long. Because when I made this trade, I didn't think it would happen happen, but if it ever was going to happen, this would have been when I hoped it would happen, that Sammy Peralta would get sent down or placed on waivers or whatever it would take for him to get off this team, but it didn't happen. He's still here as a 55 overall just stuck on the team because he has all of his minor league options used up but what that means for our team right now is since the game just can't send sammy peralta down it sent down tim hill and tim hill it's not like he was doing much he only pitched in five and a third innings for some reason up to this point in the year you know he's a 65 overall d potential attributes going down but he was still what i felt like was a pretty good lefty if I were to bring him in. But anyways, with that being the trade that we made and losing a lefty now in the bullpen, I think that what I'm going to do is I'm going to move Tyler Wells into the starting rotation. He has 71 stamina, a five pitch mix. I mean, this dude basically is a starter and so far jared schuster even though we got all the boosts we could get with him he still hasn't been doing that great in the starter role i mean you take out the start i had with him where i think i gave up two runs in like six innings or something and he's just doing insanely bad so rather than give him time to try and figure that out i'm just gonna move him to the bullpen i think it makes more sense anyway with him being just a three pitch pitcher so we're gonna make this swap here we're gonna move tyler wells into the starting rotation Schuster's move to the bullpen and what that should do is give me somebody I'm more confident starting games with but then also in Schuster this gives us a pretty highly rated and I would even say more usable lefty to come out of that bullpen so then the other change that I've made it's a very minor one it's probably been a long time coming but up until this point this year we've had a platoon at catcher where Max Stassi faces the righties and Martin Maldonado faces the lefties but I've made the change Stassi's going to be our everyday starting catcher. Maldonado has just been real bad. Like you'd think at least having what was starting at 72 power against lefties would lead to maybe a few more home runs than that, but he's just not doing anything. I guess besides drawing a decent number of walks, but to me the 311 on base percentage doesn't really make up for the rest of it. His fielding's getting bad. His arm's still pretty good, but that's about it. So I just think overall Max Stassi's probably a better option to have back there. He's putting the together actually a kind of nice season and then moving into trade management i have made some adjustments to uh who we're targeting but i actually am just now realizing i didn't adjust this yet so let me go ahead and do that real quick because i'm targeting some middle infielders but anyways i've gotten rid of the two starters that i've been targeting up until this point this year we're no longer targeting any starting pitching i feel pretty good about where our starting pitching is right now i'm still keeping jojo romero around on our targeting list even even though I feel like it's kind of becoming more and more unlikely that he gets traded to us because I think when I check the Cardinals are actually in first place in their division but I mean this would just be such a good lefty to have I can't take him off of the list just in case we can get him we had already put Gary Sanchez on there last time so the two new guys are Willie Adamas and Brendan Rodgers I don't really know how likely Willie Adamas is you know being an 86 overall I forget where the Brewers are actually in the standings right now it'd be kind of handy if they had that as a tab here you could check on was like team performance or something along those lines but anyway you know he's having a pretty solid year actually by Willie Adamas standards this is probably one of his better seasons but the thing about him he would just be a rental a one-year guy but that's actually kind of perfect for for what we would need at shortstop because like right now our shortstops Paul DeYoung that's kind of why I want a new shortstop he hasn't been doing that bad for us actually he's been playing a little bit better than I think we would have expected him to but still we could get a little bit better performance out of this position. And you know, it's March to October. The goal is always to contend and compete for a World Series ring. So getting a better shortstop than DeYoung would 
help us along that path a bit more. But the reason I'm fine with a rental is we've got Colson Montgomery coming up through the system. He's been progressing pretty nicely too this season, already up to a 73. So I feel like I don't really need anybody long term because he might even be ready to go next season. And then the other guy I added was just Brendan Rodgers from the Rockies. I figure, you know, he's only got the rest of this year and next year of team control. And the Rockies are still far away from competing so i figure they'd probably be somewhat willing to give him up he's having a nice season too so that might mean it would take a little bit more to get him but obviously he's a primary second baseman he can play short he just won't be playing it as well as adamas would or even de young does but he's a pretty good bat he's actually a really good bat and then obviously he has that extra year too that we'd be able to have him for to give us a little bit more flexibility whether or not montgomery ends up on our team next year so i'm already probably taking way too much time to talking about stuff like this. I just get way too into it. But I know one thing that I referenced in the last episode and maybe even a couple episodes now, and I've never actually brought you guys in to look at it, but it's the fact that we have Joe Barlow stuck in AAA. We need this guy up on the big league team. Look how good he is. He's up to a 71 overall right now. He's a B potential, only 28 years old. So he's got time to get there. And he's only got like just under two years of service time so we would have him i know here it says free agent after this year but i'm pretty sure just judging by what's happened in the past march to october's when it looks like this pretty sure if he got brought up to the big league squad we would see this change and we'd have the whole team control situation i don't know that for sure that's just what I'm guessing and what I'm hoping. But dude, a 91 hits per nine, that'd be so good out of the bullpen. All right, so I think we're finally ready to hop into this game against the Twins. And whenever we play the Twins, it's a big game because that would mean we can gain some ground on them. We already have a 2-1 lead. All we got to do is hang on to it for the rest. We've only got two innings to do that. And here we go. They brought in, it looks like Royce Lewis to pinch hit right here because he doesn't have any stats on the day. And speaking of stats on the day, let's see, we've got Munkai with a bomb and then well of course <laughs> of course it's jared schuster putting together a really nice start right after i bumped him out of the starting rotation but that's fine even if we had had this information i still might have moved him to the bullpen just with some of the other reasons i gave so they released a patch that i'm sure you guys heard about with all the issues that happened but one of the things that they fixed was they uh, brought the pinpoint timing back to normal but i had adjusted so much that it's almost going to be a readjustment having to get back to how it is and that's why i started this count three and oh but we're getting the ground out all right and a one pitch ground out from kyle farmer too one more to go here and armstrong's gonna have a nice day and we get the punch out so real nice outing from armstrong we just need to hold him for one more inning we may as well get some more runs oh my god max stassi max stassi with the perfect perfect home run to give us that run of insurance immediately i don't know how many of you guys saw it but i posted a uh, white Sox theme team video in diamond dynasty where i played some ranked seasons and i had max stassi the live series at like a 60 something overall bronze and he hit two home runs for me in diamond dynasty so now that's translating over to here i'm all for it that's our new starter every day all right, I'll take my walk. Mankata has had a really nice day. We need that out of him. I didn't realize he wasn't having that great of a year, but I was just looking at my stats before I started recording today. Mankata somehow had a negative wins above replacement. It wasn't much. It was like negative 0.1 or negative 0.2. And Eloy going the other way. That's a really nice swing, man. We might not be done yet. We've got two on, only one out for Luis Robert coming up. And oh my god, okay. I really wish that could have been a little bit more, but I'll take a perfect swing, a base hit, and another run driven in. And Vaughn, oh, I don't know about that one. Okay. Oh, okay, well, even when I don't make a good swing today, I'm still get, getting the positive results. And then, nope, Fletcher is going to be the one that grounds into the double play anyway. So we can't get ourselves enough runs to end up as a blowout or erase the save situation but it's a three run lead now as opposed to one that's a big difference so here comes garrett crochet again he gets the big entrance and he's earned it now he has 18 saves on the season with a zero era i hope i didn't just jinx that but 
Dude has been lights out this year. I'm also recording this the day after opening day where we saw what Garrett Crochet has in him as a starter. And my God, do I have hope. Dude looked absolutely electric as the opening day starter. And I can't say that I had much faith in him to do that. And then I'm starting his day here with a walk. Oh my God, what is with their eyes right here? This doesn't need to happen. Okay, there we go. That's more like it. There's our punch out. Out number one. And okay, come on. Let's not let's not threaten here. There's no need. We don't need to have them bringing up their tying run after we made this a three-run game. Okay, that's got to be two. We got our rollover. We got our double play. We got out of it without giving up anything. That is a nice win to gain a game on the division leaders. I don't know though, we keep racking up these kind of wins where it's already a game we're winning or we're tied and we only end up getting like one or two fireballs of momentum. We need a game to load into where I'm losing and I get the chance to make a comeback and then actually make that comeback. That would set us off. All right, so let's see what that turns into then. Hopefully it means we win our next game against the Twins. All the ground we can gain, the better. Come on, let's take the series. We did. We took the series. Now we got to play Pittsburgh. That's the end of the first half, right in the middle of a series against Pittsburgh. But at the end of the first half, we get a four and a half star rating, or actually that looks like a 4.56 star rating, because that's a little bit more than half. But we're 11 wins above our expected wins. 51 and 45, but we've still got a long ways to go. And we pick up another win there. And now here's the draft. Still right in the middle of the series against Pittsburgh, but actually I guess that is how it is, isn't it? I'm just, I'm just, I'm not quite ready yet though to start the draft. Just, just give me a second here. All right, there we go. Now I'm ready to make some business decisions. You wanna act like an executive, you gotta dress like one. And before we just hop right into the draft, I wanna make sure and add all my prospects that I'm looking at onto our draft board. Wanna take some time, do my due diligence. All right, so I didn't actually add like a ton of names to our draft queue, but you know, I'll keep updated as we go along. This first pick though, obviously, is gonna be the big one. We're the number five pick in the draft, and then we don't get our next pick until pick 42. So my my number one guy right now is James Scott, the second baseman, great starting overall, good potential, switch hitter. This is the guy I want. It's just, we're pick five, he's ranked fourth, and we have him ranked third. So there is definitely a very solid chance he doesn't fall down to me. And if that happens, I've got two backups. I'd be really tempted to take Connie Kang. We have him ranked fourth. The overall draft consensus is that he's ranked 83rd. But he's an 18-year-old catcher with what should be really nice potential. Starting overalls, you know, a little low, but he's 18, so that's fine. But the other one that I might be tempted into is Matt Cobb as a starting pitcher. 21 years old to start with what should be a pretty solid overall, you know, if he stays in the middle there of that 61 to 71. You know, he might start at a pretty solid like 66 overall with a high B to low A potential. But the thing that's even more enticing is the fact that he was born in Illinois. So this is like drafting the, the hometown guy type deal. I also can't forget about Chuck Glover. He's another catcher that we've scouted fully. We have him ranked eighth. He looks like a really good fielding and contact catcher with a high starting overall and solid B potential probably is what he'll end up with. I just don't know if picking him five would be like a little bit of a reach when we could get two guys that we have ranked as like a, a slightly better talent. So I don't know. I kind of just want to get into it, see how I'm feeling in the moment, see how things end up going down. So let's go, let's get into it. All right, so this is all information we don't really need besides right here is when I'm on the clock, I get four minutes to take a pick. All the CPU teams have 10 seconds in between their picks. And I'm probably just gonna sit here and wait out each individual pick because I don't wanna be shortchanged on the time that I have to try and you know make the best picks possible. Obviously I won't hear, I won't sit here showing you guys every single pick that's made. And all right, now we're ready. We see the full draft order. The consensus number one overall pick is this Leo Sierra 
both the MLB and me with 100% scouting have him ranked as the number one draft pick. So let's see. Let's hit start draft. Let's see if it's him. And who do we got here? The Cleveland Guardians did not select him. They selected my guy. They took James Scott number one overall. I was thinking he was going to fall all the way to five and he's the number one overall pick. Well, at least we already know we're going to be pivoting. I wonder what kind of chances that Leo Sierra has of dropping down to me. Probably... Probably not much, but he's still not being taken. Number two pick is Maurice Kahn. All right, so the third pick in the draft. What are we going to see here? It's it's the other guy I was looking at, Matt Cobb. So that means that the number one consensus guy is still there, but also so are my other two catchers. So I have at the top of my list right now, I didn't even put Leo Sierra on my list actually because I didn't think he would be here. But right now we would have three catchers at the top of my list. So it looks like our number one pick one way or another is going to be a catcher. So let's see, who are the A's going to take? They did take Leo Sierra. I was... Man, I really thought for a second he might drop all the way down. But now, it kind of looks like all we're really left with is Connie Kang. I will do one more look here just to make sure there's no other... Yeah, I mean, we don't have any better looking starting pitchers i mean this guy was ranked third but we dropped him all the way to 19 so that'd be a little bit of a reach so we're gonna go ahead we're gonna take connie kang let's see what we can get out of connie kang is he gonna be a reach or did our scouts give us some good information here because this is a little scary to take a guy that maybe everyone else thought is a second or third rounder and we're taking him number four overall this really feels like a like a money ball type move here i really hope it pays off all right, the guy I'm kind of eyeing here for my next pick, if he makes it that far, I already have him on my list here, but it's John McMahon. According to this, it's going to take a little bit of luck for him to slip all the way down to my next pick being at 42, I think it was, but a switch hitting pretty high starting overall should be B potential left fielder with a lot of good fielding and speed attributes already. I think that's who I'm going to go with if he makes it to my next pick. All right, so we are about to wrap up round one here, and we're about to enter the range that my guy John McMahon could get taken. Three closing pitchers were taken to end the first round, though. And now you got the prospect promotion incentive round. So that's now two picks and two relief pitchers that the D-backs have taken. Oh, and there goes John McMahon at 32 to the Orioles, as if they need another high-caliber prospect like that. I don't know. I didn't really have the highest hope he was going to make it all the way down to me but now I gotta figure out what I'm gonna do next all right we're back on the clock and I don't really know what to do because we already took a catcher our top rated prospect still available right now by kind of a lot is Chuck Glover I mean we have him ranked eighth and this is about to be pick 42 but also we have Jeremy Bench here we have him ranked 38th he has a really good looking starting overall and that potential is not super high. But one thing you got to remember is fast track opportunities. So if he starts at like, you know, high 60, low 70 overall with only maybe a high 70, low 80 potential. If we fast track him, that boosts his potential up too. So now he could all of a sudden become a high 80 or even an A potential. So I think I want to do that. I think I'm going to go with Jeremy Bench here for my number two pick, even though, you know, based on the MLB rank, there's still a chance he's there the next time around that I get to make a pick and chances are Chuck Glover won't be but I feel like if I'm gonna get one and not the other with what we've already done with our first pick I'd rather take Jeremy Bench and get a little bit of uh you know different positions going on rather than just making my top two picks the same position so we're gonna take and we're gonna take Jeremy Bench with our second pick in our first draft within this March to October and I feel pretty good about this one especially with the uh, thought of a fast track and call up opportunity down the line. Oh, I just checked back here. I was looking at some uh, new prospects. Chuck Glover got taken at 49 by the Red Sox. And then this dude was who I was just looking at. And now he got taken. So man, barely halfway through the second round here. And I'm only down to two people left on my draft queue board. We're going to need to put in some work looking at some prospects here. Wow. Oh, all right. And we are here on uh, my third pick here. Wasn't really on the ball, but I did add a couple more dudes to my uh, my draft queue here. I just got to figure out which one of these in the next three minutes, 40 seconds looks like the most enticing. All right. You know what? I feel like we kind of need to fill up our draft board here because we have holes to fill everywhere. So instead of going with what I would consider as the safe option here in Ryan Benjamin, I think I want to 
go with Andreas Cairo in right field. We only have him scouted up to 65%, but he kind of looks like the uh, slightly worse option of the guy we were looking at to take before, John McMahon. Switch hitting outfielder with really good fielding, solid speed ratings. Looks like he should be a pretty good contact hitter too. We don't really know where he's going to land in terms of his current overall or his potential. Those ranges are still pretty wide, so that's why this is a little bit more of a risk. We don't have as good of an idea as to how good this dude can be, but if he hits on the high end of those ranges, this could end up being a really nice pick, so I want to take him. I want to take the risk. Oh, actually, now I don't know. Now I'm second-guessing myself, or with him being ranked 76, then our next pick being 80th, do I wait to see if he's still there? I can play it safe now and then it'd be a little bit safer to take him later. Oh, now I'm second guessing myself because this dude, high starting overall, not amazing potential, but fast tracks, call ups, could be a way to get him better. Oh man, and I, I kind of like his pitch mix, cutter, sinker, slider, change. I'm changing my mind at the last second here. I am. I'm going with the safer pick. I'm drafting Ryan Benjamin. Can't believe I just did that, but I guess, I guess that's probably not a bad pick either, especially once I thought about the fast track potential, especially with what we've seen fast tracks do for starting pitchers this year. And then, okay, well, maybe it wouldn't have been the worst pick because Andreas Cairo got taken literally the next pick. So that's going to have to be someone we keep in mind. And it's going to hurt even more if he turns into something good because he went to somebody in our division. All right, we're about ready for our next pick here. And since I didn't go with my, uh, oh, wait, we only have one minute now to make our picks. Really? Or is this some kind of bug, a glitch or something? I don't know. Either way, I felt pretty set on my next pick. Just because I didn't go with my risky pick last time, I kind of want to go with one this time. We're going to go Kano Matsumoto. Another guy we don't have scouted fully, but with what information we do have, I kind of like what he can bring to the table. For someone whose range is still pretty big for that starting overall, it doesn't go down super far. Good speed. It looks like he brings a pretty solid bat, so I'm going to go with him for what is this, our fourth pick of the draft? Might have been a little bit of a reach. And all right, we're about to be on the clock here in the fourth round. And again, it's only a one minute timer now. I don't like how they change that up on you as you get further down in the draft. But again, I'm pretty set on who I want to take here. We're going to take our third starting pitcher of the draft, Jody Deal, another guy we only have scouted up to 65%, but in that 65%, we have him ranked all the way up to 42. 18 year old from Australia. I kind of like his pitch mix. I'm curious to see what a running fastball does. The uh, hits and Ks per nine are kind of abysmal, but another thing that fast tracks can solve if we get one with him in the future. So I'm taking another potential risk here. We're going to need it to pay off, but we're taking Jody Deal out of the land down under. And all right, we're back on the clock again. And again, I think I'm going to make a pick based on the hope of a future fast track and call up opportunity because Eldridge Flanagan here, he's got a guaranteed potential between 80 and 90. So at least, you know, he's got a good potential and he's going to continue to improve. The starting overall is going to be kind of on the low end for somebody that's going to be 21 years old to start. But again, with the chance at a fast track, the chance at a call up being chances to boost his attributes pretty significantly all at once. That gives him a chance to turn into something, and he's got a cool glove. All right, that makes me feel really good about that pick. Look at that glove. It's got flames on it. And we are on the clock for our final pick in the draft, and once again, I know who I'm going to take. We'll see. I mean, we only have this dude 50% scouted, but he's the highest re we have ranked right now at 98. Although you would assume if he was actually that good of a pick and he was going to hit on the higher ends of those projections, somebody who knows more about him would have already been all over this. But then again, he is unranked in that uh, MLB draft ranking thing. So maybe nobody knows about him. And I am going to get a pretty big steal right here at pick number 170. But either way, let's take him. It's our last pick of the draft this year. And I don't really know how I feel about the draft. I don't know how I feel about the picks that I've made. We're definitely going to have to wait and see until the signing period's over and we actually get to see everybody's potentials and current ratings laid out in front of us. But I guess I don't really have anything else to do here, so I can just 
sim the rest of the draft let me just make sure there's not a seventh run i'm forgetting about no so let's just go ahead let's sim to the end and that does it for our first draft within this white Sox march to october and then we we cap it off by winning the series against pittsburgh although i thought we won game two also and it's saying we lost it oh and all right this is a little different i think last year it would put you 21 days until the signing deadline and it would bump you to this screen every three days this time we got 14 days and it brings us here every two but this is just to sign our draft picks it works a lot like scouting except it's a little less important i almost feel like i don't know but basically we have 13.21 million dollars worth of bonus money that we can spend on these guys but just judging by what all these bonus demands are we're going to be able to fit within that budget pretty easily here so i i could just try and sign most of these dudes right now if i wanted to should we just try and sign our number one overall pick right away i mean another thing this would give you a chance to do is um okay i guess that's another piece of information you can only offer them a contract once they reach 50 percent interest so i think there was one dude at like 47 percent that i should throw on here so we can get his interest up no it's 49 percent. so matsumoto just one week of being on here should be good but another thing that this could do or that this does do is it continues to scout these players so right now matsumoto we only had 65 percent scouted but in two days we'll have them up to 70 percent scouted so we could have a chance to continue scouting some of these guys to like see if they're any better or worse than we thought they were when we picked them but like i said going through all this bonus these bonus demands we're probably going to be able to meet these demands anyway and i don't think this counts against like our team budget and our team salary and stuff like that it's just purely the bonus allotment pool so i'm not too worried about continuing to scout these dudes i think i can just kind of like sign them all and i'm fine with that so let's just let's offer here let's see what we can do offering to our number one pick all this stuff is pretty much it seems like just what i know of last year so we're good to skip through it and yeah right here the absolute lowest offer we can offer to Connie Kang is almost $2 million more than his demand. So even if we sat here gaining his interest even more, I don't think there's really any benefit to that. So we're just going to go ahead and submit him this lowest offer possible here. We'll see if he's ready to accept this right away. He's not ready to accept it right away. Okay, so I guess you know our number one pick we should prioritize them we'll leave them on here to gain a little bit more interest as we go so what about our number two pick he's already 78 percent interested in signing with us the lowest we can offer him is basically what his demand was anyway so he's still 78 percent interested i'm gonna try and offer that to him too and he's also declining okay maybe they changed the logic a bit for this because i feel like last year for the most part it was pretty easy to uh get all these guys to accept these offers almost immediately so i just want to see if we can sign any of these guys ryan benjamin was our third pick you know what no i'll offer him exactly what he wants 1.2 mil we'll offer him 1.2 mil and we do we we at least signed somebody right away he was the guy with the cool glove i thought that was somebody else maybe we have a couple guys with the cool glove all right and then jody deal our next pick after matsumoto who we still have to gain interest for what he wants is the low we'll we'll bump it up one i guess shouldn't hurt too much and we sign him our round five pick then eldridge flanagan we can i'll just bump him up one also and he's declining all right everybody has the cool glove i guess all right then let's see about our last pick of the draft this year if we can uh get him signed we'll just bump him up one and he does want to sign so we got probably what about half of these guys signed right away but yeah we should have plenty of money to do this so there's really no no worries here we just gotta just gotta let it all play out so we can go ahead and advance and as soon as we stop simulate oh hang on hang on one more second we have one more big decision to make one more reason to to keep the suit on for a little bit longer i guess and this is actually a big one i was hoping to see Corey lee pop up again as a fast track after i picked schuster over him last time because Corey lee could be a really good fast track guy here b potential 62 overall catcher not a very good hitter right now but that's what we have the chance to improve on he's already a solid fielder and 76 speed as a catcher with all kinds of secondary positions so yeah we are definitely picking Corey lee to fast track right now we just gotta hope i can 
break this stretch of not succeeding in position player player lock games because to get Corey Lee a successful fast track if that even gets him to an A potential man that'd be huge but it could get his overall up to like 67 68 range which honestly with our backup catcher right now being Martin Maldonado down at a 61 if they give me the chance to call up Lee I'll probably call up Lee and then that would give him you know another chance to get an even bigger attribute boost we all know how this works we've seen it with two pitchers so far so yeah Corey Lee's who I'm picking and that will be how we start next episode with a Corey Lee fast track down in AAA Ooh, and now we're in danger. They're telling me I'm in danger. That's a great way to start the second half of the season. But anyways, that's where we're going to end this one today. I have no idea how long this one's going to go. I also don't know when this is going to go up because it's already 5.15 p.m. right now and I still got to edit the whole thing. But everything I've been saying the last couple episodes about keeping the episodes to a certain length does not apply to the draft episode. If this one goes long, if it even goes over half an hour, it goes over half an hour. But anyways, that's going to do it for today. Make sure to let me know what you think of my draft picks if you have any thoughts. Also, make sure to hit the like button if you enjoyed today's video. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already and i think that's just about enough things to ask you guys to do so thanks for watching thanks for stopping by today and i will see you next time